And Dr. Hamid and others in the generic drug industry charge that many countries' laws are written in favor of the big pharmaceutical companies, which since 1998 have spent more than $720 million lobbying the U.S. government. There is a theory, indeed an argument put forward by some in India and elsewhere. It goes along these lines. Look, what happened here is the U.S. government uh, played hand in hand with the large pharmaceutical companies. The pharmaceutical companies lobbied the government. The combination of the government and the pharmaceutical companies uh, put the arm on governments such as the Indian government to get advantage, such as this new patent law in India. We certainly talk to our government officials, uh, uh, as is our constitutional right, and other industries do as well. Our, our industry was involved in, in those negotiations was watching those negotiations very carefully, but so were other American industries. But so was India, and so was Indians' in, uh, industries. And th these are all mature uh, countries that agreed to uh, take on intellectual property protection in exchange for other benefits that they achieved in the negotiation. It was a negotiation, Dan. It wasn't just one-sided. The U.S. is not taking into account, in my view, the interests of poor people in developing countries. It's mainly uh, trying to uh, get India to adopt patent protections earlier than it was required to do so. It put pressure all the way from 1995 to 2005, which is when it actually had to do it. It's done a lot behind the scenes through meetings with government officials, by creating alliances with some industry forces in India, again to adopt strict standards. We've obtained documents showing that U.S. officials repeatedly complained to Indian leaders that they were not moving fast enough. An October 30, 1997 Commerce Department memo says, quote, we need to keep up pressure to get India to implement its intellectual property commitments. And a January 22, 1998 memo notes that the U.S. has been aggressively trying to influence India to establish a fair market for pharmaceuticals adding, quote, we will engage the new Indian government on these issues after it takes office in mid-March. These issues are important to the drug companies in part because there is so much money at stake. The Fortune 500 lists pharmaceuticals as the second most profitable industry in America behind mining and oil production. But Baker says the money we spend on medicines isn't just going towards recovering the cost of research and development. There's two and a half times as much spent on marketing and, and, uh, as, as there is on research and development. Um, there's more retained as profit than is spent on research and development. From some perspectives, that's a real waste of economic resources from an industry that uh, basically earns more than $600 billion a year in global sales. When the poorest of people don't have access to generic drugs, what's the best way to get them generic drugs? That's going to vary from country to country, and you have to look at the health infrastructure that they have. For example, uh, if people have to walk two or three days to get to the nearest clinic, their access to medicines will be very bad. A predicament that afflicts so many Indians who desperately need 21st century medications but still live far from the pharmacy in primitive villages. Today, we have the lowest price medicine available in the world in India, and yet, if you go 10 kilometers outside a tarred road, you have no medicine. You actually have a Pepsi and Coke available in every village, but you don't have a simple aspirin. And that is the tragedy of healthcare in India today. With so many existing barriers to access, stringent patent laws in India may only make it harder for people to get their pills people who on average spend $3.50 a year on medicine. Baker says the enormity of what this new patent law means for poor patients cannot be understated. A product patent regime in India will mean that the, the, the major country in the world that supplies lowest cost generic medicines to poor people in developing countries will now be prevented from making those products because of patent protections. And it is those products low-cost generic drugs that have made it possible for a place like this to thrive. This orphanage in Pune supports these 53 children, all born with HIV. 
the orphanage scraped by with donations to afford food and medicines. None of these children has any other family to take care of them. Sushmapte is the project coordinator of the orphanage. All our children are aware that they are having HIV and we are trying to uh, create uh, them in co confidence that they have to live with HIV, like diabetes, like heart. They can live with HIV, they can live a good life with HIV. Uh, when they take medicines and high protein diet, they can live. One of them is 15-year-old Matali. Even though she has HIV, she sounds like any other girl her age. But for Matali, it isn't easy. Her parents died of AIDS when she was just a little girl. She has been at the orphanage for three years. This place has become her refuge from a society which is often cruel to those with HIV. <laughs> But actually, inside these walls, there is hope. When she came, uh, of course, uh, she was quite weak, weak girl. Uh, but now she has become quite healthy. She has uh, gained her weight also. And um, she is not having any major health problem. But critics warn that India's new patent law could put generics out of reach for people like Matali. There are 300 million Indians who don't have food to eat. There are 400 million Indians who cannot read or write. There are 500 million Indians who live their lives without electricity in their homes. 500 million, twice the population of America. There are 700 million Indians who don't have any sanitation. Now in this scenario, to, to have a monopoly in drugs which could probably lead again to a scenario where anti-AIDS drugs are $10,000 per patient per year or some of the anti-cancer drugs are beyond the reach of the poor people. And the government need an infrastructure where access to medicines at affordable prices has to be an absolute priority. Dr. Youssef Hamid. And now this final thought. World AIDS Day was December 1st, and the theme of this year's commemoration was leadership. It's a good time for leaders to remember that more than two million people a year are dying from the virus, and antiretroviral drugs only reach about a tenth of the people who need them. Low-cost medicines are one way for patients to get treatment, but currently, according to a recent study by Oxfam, 85% of the world is still completely priced out of the pharmaceutical market. For HDNet, from New York, Dan Rather reporting. Good night. If you have questions or comments, send us an email. The address is viewer at hd.net.